Hello, I am Professor S. Shankaran in the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. Okay, let us continue our discussion on uh, uh, dislocations. In the last class, uh, we looked at detailed geometry of dislocations and uh, types of dislocations. And we also looked at uh, the energy of dislocations. Uh, okay. And to, and uh, in this lecture, we will see uh, stress fields around the dislocations. So if you look at the slide, uh, what is shown here on the left hand side is a uh, very nice uh, image, which clearly shows that, uh, you know, the extra half plane is there and then there is a dislocation, the positive edge dislocation. And then you see that uh, second half of the lattice uh, and there is some you know like in the previous slide i sh i showed some uh, shade this green shade nicely gave um, some kind of a stress field around the edge dislocation what you have to appreciate here is this uh, the extra off plane this particular uh, the above which the stress field is quite different compared to the bottom of the edge dislocation. That is, the, the above planes, the above off, I would say, will have, it will experience a compressive stress. Okay. And the bottom half experiences tensile stress. Okay. And it's not that simple. I mean, uh, it, we have just uh, nicely shown in the picture like this but if you get into the details uh, it is much more interesting to note that uh, contours of uh, the stress fields are shown here and it is not simple compression simple tension it is hydrostatic stress so you know the meaning of hydrostatic stress now because we have enough background for that so the above one is hydrostatic compression and the bottom one is hydrostatic tension. Okay. And we will now see that uh, how complicated it becomes when it comes to the edge dislocation stress fields okay. um, as compared to a uh, screw dislocation. Right. So around the dislocation, the atoms are displaced uh, from their normal position. These displacements are equivalent to the displacements caused by elastic strains arising from the external stresses. So to describe these stress, stress fields, and then this is a coordinate uh, we are choosing, and uh, this is a reference, and you can see that uh, you know, so polar coordinates. So this coordinate system for describing a location near a screw dislocation. The dislocation is parallel to Z axis and at a distance R is equal to 0. So it is parallel to Z. So the R component is 0 there. The equations given here as in the isotropic elasticity mm -hmm. for a Screw dislocation with a bulkier vector B parallel to Z axis. These are the and the the, the shear stress tau in uh, uh, polar coordinates. Shear stress we know G V by two pi R. This we have already seen this one. But since it is tau R theta and tau R Z, which is equal to sigma R, which is equal to sigma theta is equal to sigma z is equal to 0 because r is 0 where g is a shear modulus and r is the radial distance from the dislocation the minus sign indicates that the repulsive force is inversely proportional to the distance between the dislocations so we are talking about the repulsive force of the dislocation we will uh, in a minute we will see what is the what are the detailed forces? So the above equation indicates that the screw dislocation creates no hydrostatic 
tension or compression because the hydrostatic uh, stress is defined like this sigma r plus sigma theta plus sigma c by 3. So, here we are talking about r is equal to 0. Therefore, there should be no dilatation or volume strain associated with a screw dislocation. However, real crystals are elastically anisotropic. Please, we have to remember the equations whatever we show here is through isotropic elasticity and in a real time crystal system, we will have elastic anisotropy. Okay, this may not strictly valid and then we may require some special expressions so that it will describe the plastic modulus with respect to each direction of the uh, crystal orientation or atomic density and so on. So, there may be a small dilatations associated with the screw dislocation in real times. That is what it says. For an edge dislocation that lies parallel to Z and that has its budget vector parallel to X axis, then the situation is slightly different. So, the shear stress is uh, defined like this in a Cartesian coordinate. Okay. And what you see here is there are two normal stresses, right? Sigma x and sigma y and the shear stress. All of them are there. And you notice that there is an another sigma that is a third normal stress also exists in this case of edge dislocations. Okay. So, we are not getting into the details of how to derive these equations. My intention of bringing here is to give an idea that the, the stress field around the edge dislocations are quite complicated. Okay. It is quite complicated. That is the idea. And then these all these equations uh, support that. Uh, we will also go to uh, visual uh, impression on how uh, the stress distribution around these dislocations are uh, perceived. Okay. So, here where x and y are the coordinates of the dislocation as shown in the figure, uh, where the d is gb by 2 pi times 1 minus v. This I have already told in the previous class. Whenever you are talking about edge dislocation, you have to look at this uh, elastic constants. This 1 minus u term comes because this is uh, treated as a plane problems and especially plane strain problems. Okay. You just uh, go back and verify what is that you have uh, derived for uh, plane stress and plane strain conditions, the different elastic constants we have derived and you will be able to appreciate this. One of the important features of these equations is that there is a hydrostatic stress sigma h. This term also you know in the earlier classes we have seen sigma x plus sigma and sigma z by 3. This is in a Cartesian coordinate around an edge dislocation. So, the hydrostatic stress can be uh, written like this by the previous expressions what we have for x sigma x and sigma y and sigma z and where a is the gb times 1 plus nu divided by 3 pi 1 minus nu. So, there is a hydrostatic compression above the dislocation edge dislocation that is positive y and hydrostatic tension below it. This is what we have already seen it. And uh, what I am trying to show is an, an, another a nice uh, illustration of uh, how the stress fields are distributed among the, I mean, around this edge dislocation. So, all of you know this notation now, the way of representing uh, a shear stress in the, in the strength of material uh, notations we have already discussed this how the shear stress and how positive shear stress is 
you know, symbolized like this or negative this is positive this is negative so what what we are trying to sh uh, do by showing this here is as such we said that there is a hydrostatic compression and hydrostatic tension here when the stress fields are too complex like this how this dislocation will respond to the external stimuli for example a stress within the crystal itself how it will what type of stress whether it is a positive uh, sign or negative sign okay whether it will attract or repel or well just annihilate or it will just uh, come to an equilibrium or it will further increase the energy so all these questions can be answered or at least you, you can at least make an attempt to uh, i mean correlate make an attempt to interpret right? this will help so that is the reason so if you look at this uh, <coughs> Yeah, this is a coordinate system. We'll try to now explain this. The relational and shear stresses and the signs of these stresses are illustrated here. Okay, so you know the shear stress. Um, this is positive and this is negative. And again, this is all compressive, right? You can look at the normal stresses. They are in compressive mode. And here, uh, again biaxial and uh, this is tension this is compression in this direction it is tension this is compression this is positive shear this is a negative shear so what is a net uh, that is what is uh, shown here the sense of shear stress tau xy and the dilatational sigma x and sigma y stresses components of net dislocations so we will come back to this uh, diagram in a in a minute uh, where, where we exactly see what this uh, particular stresses will in each quadrant how they are going to behave in this quadrant is it going to behave uh, completely tense uh, i mean uh, tension or what kind of an effect it will create to an external force or external object is that it is going to attract something or whether it is going to repel something what kind of force it is going to exhibit in each quadrant that will that will also uh, give you much more idea we'll come back to this diagram okay there are no shear stresses acting in the direction parallel to the dislocation line that means dislocation line you know this is a line which is going through this uh, uh, perpendicular to this plane of this image and uh, there is however a third relational stress normal to the plane of the figure there is no shear stress but there is a normal stress this is what we have seen okay the stress field around the dislocation tells us something what is this image shows this image shows the lining up of this edge dislocation one over the other please remember we just described that the extra half plane wherever it is there it is hydrostatic compression and, and below that hydrostatic tension and when the dislocations are lined up like this what can happen so you should just uh, so the the forces of uh, you know compression and uh, tension they try to align together so that is why this kind of alignment is possible which is also called a low angle uh, boundary okay so that dilatation causes interaction between the edge dislocations given sufficient mobility edge dislocations of like signs tend to form walls with uh, one dislocation directly over the other as shown okay. so there is an uh, interaction of this uh, edge dislocation with the like signs that is same sign here that's what we have shown here they try to form a wall okay the hydrostatic tension caused by one dislocation is particularly annihilated by the hydrostatic compression of its neighbor so 
So this is compression and this is tension. So it goes just aligns. Very interesting, right? So the relatively low energy and the, therefore stable configuration forms a low angle grain boundary. Very important idea. Okay. See, looking at the stress fields around the dislocation already gives you a perspective of how the boundaries forms. And if at all if it forms a boundary, whether it is going to remain same or not, we are getting some idea already, right? And because of uh, the stress field around the dislocation. And what are the other aspects of uh, this? So you have uh, the dislocation like this and it has got uh, hydrostatic compression and tension. And it can attract large solute atoms below this and small solute atoms above this. In solid solutions, the solute atoms that are larger than the solvent atoms are attracted to the region just below the edge dislocation where their larger size helps relieve the hydrostatic tension. So the larger atoms in a solid solution larger than the solvent will come here and that relieve the hydrostatic tension. Very important idea. Right? And solute atoms that are smaller than the solvent atoms are attracted to the region above the edge. So here, hydrostatic compression region. In either case, edge dislocation will attract solute atoms. Very, very important point or metallurgical point of view. Okay. So edge dislocation attracts solute atoms because of the the complex stress field around it, not the screw dislocation. In interstitial solid solutions, all solute atoms are attracted to the region just below the edge dislocation where they help relieve the tension. For example, the classical example is iron carbon system where the carbon is an interstitial solid solution, right? forms an interstitial solid solution. So carbon uh, is an interstitial there and it goes and uh, gets settled here. Okay. So now we look at uh, the forces. What are the forces on dislocations? When I say forces, there could be uh, several possibilities. Either it is applied load or the, the stresses stored in the crystal itself and what these stresses will have an influence on these dislocations. A yeah, stress in crystal causes a force on dislocation. What kind of force? Suppose if you take a, a plane like this and there is a dislocation line and this is a Berger vector, the dislocation line of the length L and the shear stress tau is applied, being applied. So then what happens? Uh, the shear stress tau acting on that plane will cause a force on the dislocation per unit length, that is FL. So the, we all, when we measured the energy also, we measured the energy per unit length. Right? So here again, force per unit length, FL, okay. because this location we are measuring in length. So FL is equal to minus tau dot B, that is the force. Note that a dot product is possible here because once the plane of the stress is fixed, the stress can be treated as a vector. It's a force, a vector. Here is a force. The stress tau may result from a stress field of another dislocation. So it could merely uh, by a you know, stress field of other dislocation as well, not necessarily an applied uh, stress. Right. So if you consider two screw dislocations, except an attractive force on each of other, then the force will be 
f l is equal to minus g b1 dot b2 divided by 2 pi r. So what is that we are now doing additionally? We know that g by 2 pi r, we know that term already. The, the new term is b1 dot b2 because we are considering two dislocations and the stress field of one dislocation, how it uh, influencing the other. The minus sign means that uh, they ripple one another if the dot product is positive. That could be a possibility. So each uh, a dislocation we are we are now saying that the way in which uh, it is represented, right? It is in a positive dislocation or negative dislocation. If the positive positive come together, what happens? If the positive negative comes to come together, what happens? Positive positive come together, what happens? There are possibilities, right? So if they ripple one another, if the dot product becomes positive, then it is uh, denoted by the negative sign. An equivalent statement is two dislocations ripple each other if Frank rule predicts that their con combination would result in an energy increase. So what is Frank rule? Frank's rule is you know that uh, the energy of the dislocation is proportional to B square. That's what we have seen in the last, last class. Suppose a, a dislocation can dissociate or two dislocation, uh, partial dislocation can combine to form a, a new dislocation or a unit dislocation can also can split into two partial dislocations. But this can happen only when the energy is favorable. That is what the Frank rule says. So what does it mean? Suppose if the unit dislocation want to uh, dissociate into two partial dislocations, the, the energy requirement is, suppose the unit dislocations budget vector is B1 and the two partial dislocations B, B2 and B3, then B1, there is a condition for, uh, you know, the dissociation is both sides should be balanced, right? One side should be favorable to this energy, right? We will, we will see some of the examples. When I show some examples, then it is easier. Okay. So that's what the Frank rules says, right? Okay. If the angle between B1 and B2 is greater than 90 degrees, then this is the, the condition for the um, dislocation reactions. B1 plus B, uh, mod of B1 plus B2 should be greater than mod of B1 plus B2. The interaction of two parallel edge dislocation is somewhat more complex. This we have already, we can now uh, see why it is. Uh, the, the stress field around the dislocation, edge dislocation itself is too complex. Then the interaction between them, definitely much more complex. The shear stress field for one dis edge dislocation that lies parallel to Z with the Burgess vector parallel to x is given by the equation. This is the same equation what we just seen in the couple of slides before. Shear stress. The mutual force on that plane will be of this nature. Okay. See so earlier we, we just uh, looked at the stress field alone but now we are talking about two uh, dislocations coming together. Okay. Parallel dislocations. That's why we come to two Burgers vectors and dot product. For the dislocation with uh, like sign, that means the dot product is greater than zero. There is a mutual repulsion in the region x greater than y and and it will be an attraction in the region if x is less than y. How do we understand this? Like I said when I showed the uh, an image which shows all the complex uh, stress field states, um, I said we will come back to this. We are now going back to this diagram and in different form. So if the this is equal 
to saying that there is a mutual repulsion if the Frank rule predicts that a reaction would cause an increase in, of energy and mutual attraction if it cause a decrease of energy. So we will qualify these statements. What are these uh, statements? Okay. okay. So now you look at this image uh, um, much more carefully. We'll spend much some time on this, and then this is exactly a similar diagram um, what we have shown few slides back. Right. So what we we have just uh, divide them into four quadrants, and each quadrant also has been bifurcated with uh, uh, some straight line here. Right. So what does it mean? So in the initial uh, description, we said that the top half is the hydrostatic compression, okay, and the bottom is hydrostatic tension. So within that, we have now uh, some classification, okay. If x is equal to zero or x is equal to infinity or x is equal to y, in all these cases, the stress is zero. You can see that x is infinity, x is zero, x is equal to y means you have to travel in this line. The stress is, the force is zero, right? Any, any value other than these three will have some influence, okay? Suppose if the x is greater than uh, y and y is greater than zero, then it is repulsion, okay? So in this region, right? But if the x, I mean, y is greater than x, greater than zero, then it is an attraction. So within the quadrant, you have two scenarios. One is repulsion, one is attraction. So this is between the two dislocations, right? The attraction, I mean, the stress field is like that, but in order, if another dislocation comes, then we have to see. And that is where the Frank rule helps, uh, whether the, uh, whether we can consider the energy, whether that uh, that will dictate whether that kind of a combination of dislocation will be stable or not. So this is just a stress field around the dislocation. Okay, but you have to just uh, if another dislocation is coming, then there is a that is where the Frank rule helps in terms of energy. That is how you have to look at it. Okay, we will see some examples. The stress tau x y is zero at x equal to zero x equal to y or x equal to infinity. Between x equal to 0 and x equal to y, tau xy is negative, indicating that the stress field would cause attraction of edge dislocations of the same sign to each other. So here we are talking about uh, specifically the another dislocations, right? So it could be, uh, you know, here dislocation, dislocation interaction, but the same stress field is also will act as, as act on a second phase particle also, not necessarily a dislocation. But here we are giving a dislocation description. But you can also later you will see that this stress field also will be useful in explaining how it interacts with the a second phase particle. Yes. Therefore, edge dislocations of the same sign tend to line up one above the other as shown in the figure before. What is that before? That I have shown the low angle drain boundary, how it forms. And that is also because of this, uh, you know, attraction, right? For X is greater than Y and the stress tau XY is positive indicating that the stress field would tend to ripple another edge dislocation of the same sign. So it is like opposite to the previous case. So this is correspond to this, this quadrant, this region, the, the, the above statement on this the first one. No, attraction, this is repulsion. So, for, for just for a clarity, I want to just, uh, um, yeah, so what I want to tell you is, uh, excuse me, sorry, yeah, 
So you just try to compare that uh, diagram with this, then it will make much more uh, sense to uh, connect what is this uh, symbols indicate and then how those uh, attraction and repulsion and attractive force um, you can put one side by side and then you'll be able to appreciate this. So what each uh, symbol means that will be very clear. That's why I just want to tell you.